On day one, I spawned in as a baby poison snake. I had five hearts and was in a desert. Fozo, over here. I looked over and saw Tara, my sister. She was the leader of the snakes. Everyone looked up to her, including me. Wow, Tara, I want to be strong and brave, just like you. You will, little brother. And someday, you're going to lead all the snakes into prosperity. Suddenly, a large, scary owl flew over the hill. The snakes started to all panic. Uh... Who is this guy? It's Orion. He's trying to capture us snakes. Quickly, Fozo, you need to run. I finally found you. You're coming with me. I don't think so. Since I'm a poisonous snake, this owl should be nothing to me. Suddenly, he swooped down and knocked me against the wall. Ow! You weakling. I was low on health, and he was about to kill me. But Tara got in our way, and the owl grabbed her instead. Fozo, run away! No! Tara! No! I have to get her back. My army, get the other snakes. Suddenly, I heard screams and looked over to see the other snakes were being chased by a whole flock of birds. From the looks of things, they were all headed to a nearby forest, and I knew that I had to follow them if I wanted answers on how to save my sister. On day two, all of us were still running away. <sighs> All right, guys, time to go find another home. Wait, what? We're just gonna leave? That owl took my sister, your leader. Aren't we gonna get her back? Oh, Ryan is too strong to fight. That owl takes snakes all the time and brings them back to his nest. His nest? Why? Suddenly, we could hear the sound of birds and knew that they were nearby. The snakes all scattered and I needed to leave too. I ran as fast as I could and ended up in a snow biome. Oh no, with all this snow, the birds are easily gonna spot me. I could hear one of them getting close. I needed to hide. I looked around and found a small crevice to fit into. I know I saw a snake around here somewhere. Oh no, I need to make this hole bigger. While the bird was searching the nearby trees, I quickly was able to break down a couple of locks and craft myself a wooden pickaxe. With that, I was able to mine the crevice to better hide myself. I guess I must be seeing things. This area is clear. Ah, oh, that was close. If I was gonna save Terra, I needed to better equip myself. With the stone I just mined, I was able to make myself some stone tools. Nice. But I celebrated too fast because it was getting cold. I was starting to lose hearts. I knew that I needed to leave the cold fast and find Orion. On day three, I arrived at a jungle and noticed my hearts were coming back. Ah, a nice warm area. I searched around until I ran into a group of boars. Look, boys. Guess we're gonna be having snake for lunch. Uh, stay back. As a snake, I had the ability to splash poison on my enemies. I tried on the boar, but it wasn't strong enough to damage them. Stupid snake. Your poison's not gonna work on us. The boar then all began to surround me. Oh, no. I'm done for. Suddenly, a frog came in and jumped in between us. So, you wanna eat something? Why don't you try and eat me? Ah, it's Zeke! Run for it! Hey, uh, thanks for rescuing me. Why didn't the boar want to eat you? Easy. I'm poisonous, just like you. I'm just a little more lethal. Well, thanks for the save. I'm Fozo. My name is Zeke. Come with me. We have a lot to discuss. Welcome to my humble home. It's not much, but make yourself comfortable. I told Zeke about my situation, and he knew all too well about Orion. Orion is on a mission to get rid of all the poisonous animals in Minecraft. He won't stop until no one's left. The only way to stop him is to collect the poisonous upgrades and become the most poisonous creature ever to be seen. If getting these upgrades brings me closer to saving my sister, then that's what I'll do. Where do I start? Start by building a home. The journey ahead is a dangerous one. I quickly gathered materials around the cave and built a small little snake home right next to Zeke's house. Good. There's not much time if you want to save your sister. Take this. It should lead you to the first poisonous upgrade. Thanks, Zeke. I grabbed the map and immediately left the cave. On day five, I followed the map to the first poisonous upgrade, slithering as fast as I could. The sooner I get these, the sooner I find my sister. I passed through the plains and was suddenly confronted by a fox with... A chef's hat? Well, it looks like I found a poisonous snake. Orion will definitely want you. I can't get captured now. I tried hitting the fox with my stone sword. Ha! Your little toothpick won't harm me. The fox then swiped at me with his spatula, and I took a lot of damage. Ow! I'm too little to fight this guy. I tried to dodge the fox's attacks, but he was too fast and was overwhelming me. Ah! I needed to get out of here, but how? I then saw a small hole and had an idea. I quickly evaded the fox 
box by going inside of it. He looked around for any side of me, but eventually got frustrated and left the area. Ha! I guess being a snake has its benefits. From there, I realized I was in a smaller cave. I looked down the tunnel and can see the other end illuminating a green essence. Can this be where the first poison upgrade is? I kept journeying through the cave until I noticed some iron inside. I used my stone pickaxe to mine the material and had enough to upgrade into iron tools. I kept going further in until I met a large lizard. What brings you to the cave of poison? I told the lizard that I was there to receive the first upgrade. The lizard led me to the edge of a spring, and I looked over to see that it was full of poison. Wow, that's a lot of- ah! Ah! As I hit the poison, I could see my heart's increasing. What's happening to me? A strange sensation took place, and I can feel my body beginning to transform. I grew in size and was now an adult poison snake. I now had a total of 15 hearts and had a cool poison splash ability. Sweet! There are five keepers to the poison. Only the right person is allowed to partake in these upgrades, and it looks like you're the one. You know, you could have at least told me that before you pushed me off. To gather the second one. You need to speak to Nyx, the scorpion in the desert. Be careful. These upgrades will be getting much harder each time. On day seven, I was making my way to the desert when I saw a platypus near a pond. Leave me alone! What did platypuses ever do to you? Eh, shut up. You're gonna be my next meal. Leave him alone! I approached the crocodile and was ready to defend the platypus. He tried to attack me, but I dodged. I used my new poison splash on him, causing him to panic. Ah, poison! You dirty snake! You got lucky this time, platypus. I'll be back. The poison was too strong for the crocodile, and he fled through the pond. Hey, are you okay? Uh, yeah, the name is Phil. You aren't gonna, like, bite me and kill me, are you? Because I'm warning you, bud. I'll put up a fight! What? No! I urged him to come back to base. It wasn't safe for him here. He agreed. The two of us made it there, and I quickly built him a small home with the resources that I had left over. Looking around, I realized that this place could become a safe haven for other poisonous creatures. But first, we needed a food source. I quickly went out and lured some chickens into the base, building a pen around them and using their eggs as food. Thanks for letting me stay here. You know, us platypuses are pretty knowledgeable when it comes to biomes and animals. I heard you were looking for a scorpion. Do you know where they live? Personally? I have no idea, bro. But maybe someone at my village did. Be careful, though. It's been overrun by the birds. Why do you think I was in trouble earlier on? If you get caught, Fozo, there's no surviving that. I'll come with you for backup. Good idea, Zeke. Let's head out. Once we got closer to the swamp, I could hear that birds were flying over the area. We went under a tree to hide from them. There were too many to deal with, and I didn't want Zeke to get hurt. The swamp was completely destroyed, and there were no other platypus in sight. Just as Phil said, we tried our best to avoid the birds from spotting us, going from tree to tree, and making sure to be as quiet as possible. Eventually, we spotted a small wooden house and went inside of it. Zeke and I looked around the place until I spotted a journal on the bed. This could be useful. I picked it up and brought it over to Zeke. What does it say? Before I could read it, a few birds swooped in on us. Ah, so much for being quiet. One flew down and tried to scratch me with his claws, and I used my poison shot to counter his attack. The bird was stunned, and I used it again to defeat him. The others saw this and flew off. Now that they're gone, let's see what this journal has to say. We read it and found a section that told us where in the desert we can find Nyx. Time to go meet this scorpion. On days 9 to 10, Zeke and I made it to the desert and began our search for Nyx the scorpion. Man, this heat is killing me. Zeke was right. We needed to find cover soon. Hey, what's that? We both looked on the ground and saw a shadow that was flying closer and closer to us. It was too late when I finally saw who it was. Orion landed right in front of us. So it's true. My flock has reported you causing them some trouble. And from the looks of things, you've grown since the last time we've met. And I will keep getting stronger until I save my sister. Your sister's future is set in stone, young one. And soon Soon enough, you will be right next to her to join her fate. No, Orion charged at me, but I jumped out of the way, dodging his attack. Take this. I shot my poison at him, but he was able to dodge all of them until one managed to hit. 
Ah! Blasted snake! Once I'm done with my mission, no poison will affect me, and you will be done for! Orion flew up into the sky and left the area. What did he mean by that? There has to be more to his hatred for poison animals, and in due time, we will find the truth, but for now, we must get out of this heat, Fozo. You're right. I noticed that I was slowly starting to lose hearts. Come on, Zeke. We need to find shelter. Now! We ran across the desert looking for any way to avoid the sun. Eventually, we found a large cave entrance. What is this? The entrance to the scorpion! Quick, get inside! We walked inside, only to find the tunnel completely blocked off. Great, now what? You know, what you did back there against Orion was pretty brave. If only I could. As a frog, I'd never do any moves like that. What are you talking about, Zeke? Well, I'm not as useful as most. In the past, Orion sent his birds to attack my family and the other frogs. It was the beginning of his so-called mission. I tried to protect my family to do everything that I could, but I was too weak to do anything. My wife and son died in front of me. Like I said before, the only way that I'm useful is when I'm eaten. For so long, I wanted to be the one to stop Orion, but now I know you must be the one to do it. Wow, I'm sorry that that happened to you. I know what it's like to lose family to those birds. I won't let the same thing happen to you. I promise that I'll do everything in my power to get your sister back. Thanks, Zeke. Now, come on, let's find a way through this tunnel. We both scanned around until I saw a crack near the entrance. Suddenly, I had an idea. I slithered my way in and managed to get inside. Yes, I quickly went to the other side and opened the entrance to let Zeke in. Now let's go find that scorpion. On days 13 to 14, we journeyed further into the cave and began looking for Nyx. It sure is dark in here. Yeah, if we're on the right track, we can end up- Whoa! Ow! Zeke and I fell through a hole. I couldn't find any way to climb up, and it was too high for Zeke to jump. Hello? Is anyone out there? I think we're in some kind of trap. Looks like I've stumbled upon some intruders. We looked up to see a giant scorpion staring down above the hole. Look, we come in peace. You think I care? Give me a reason why I shouldn't sting you two right now. Because we're here to stop Orion. We need the poison upgrade you have. Ha! You're not even worthy of my poison upgrade. I mean, look at you. You're just a measly snake and a stupid frog. At least let us prove our worth. Please, he has my sister. Nick stopped for a moment and then left us. Right, he's gone. You want to prove yourselves? Fine. What can we do? My baby scorpions have been taken away from me by those birds. If you find and rescue them, then maybe I'll think about giving you the poison upgrade. You've got yourself a deal. Zeke and I were walking throughout the desert, and I was getting frustrated. Ugh, this is pointless. How are we supposed to find those baby scorpions? They could be anywhere. Calm down. There has to be a way we can find them. Just think. Concentrate. All right. I started thinking, and out of instinct, my tongue started to taste the air. I looked down, and I was able to see a bunch of footprints leading in one direction. Whoa, snakes are awesome. I know where they are. The tracks eventually led us to a different part of the desert where the scorpions were being held captive, and it looked like the birds were taking poison from them. Why would they do that? They're hurting the scorpions. We've got to save them. The two of us rushed in, and I quickly got the bird's attention while Zeke freed the scorpions. I used my poison blast on them and greatly weakened them, but there were too many to fight. Uh, I think we're outnumbered. What are we gonna do now? Suddenly, Nyx came in. Looks like you found my children. Don't worry. I'll take it from here. He swiftly took down the birds one by one. Whoa. Eventually, he took down the last one and the scorpions were all finally safe. Thank you for finding my family. Maybe you are the poisonous champion the world has been waiting for. On days 17 to 18, we returned to his cave and the scorpion led me to a secret room. Inside was another sulfur pit and something was down at the bottom. You don't need to push me down. I'll just jump. As I landed, I noticed a pair of eggs floating. Eat the eggs. They're the second upgrades. I did as he asked and ate the poisonous eggs. Suddenly, I had the same familiar sensation as my first upgrade. I grew into a much larger snake and gained five more hearts. I noticed that I now too had a tail slam ability. This will definitely come in handy. Thank you. Don't mention it, but you two must find the widow's hideout. There, your third upgrade awaits. But where am I supposed to find that? I'm sure you'll 
you'll figure it out. I never thought the day would come that someone would harness the power of the poison. Good luck, Fozo, and be well. Zeke and I started our journey back to base and came across a destroyed forest. Trees were dead and most of the grass was completely gone. What could have caused this? While we were walking, we got hit with a blast of poison. Ah! I looked up and saw a giant plant emerging from the ground in front of us. You destroy my home? Then come back for more? I shall kill you! The plant lashed out and tried to fight us. Hey, calm down! We didn't do any of this! He wasn't listening though, so I had no choice but to defend myself. I tried stunning him with my poison splash, but it was no good. It seemed like the plant was immune. I then used my new tail slime ability, which was able to stun the plant for a second, giving him time to calm down. Stop this! We didn't do anything, I swear! Ow! I'm sorry for fighting you. The last people that came through this forest left it in this state. All of my fellow plants have died out. Now there's nothing left. My name is Toxin. I am the last of the poison plants. I'm sorry to hear that, Toxin. Why don't you come with us and stay at our base? Any place is better than here. If you help me, I shall help you grow even stronger, Snake. On days 21 to 23, we returned to base with Toxin, and I got to work making him a new home. I replaced a lot of the cave's ground with grass blocks and plants to make it feel like his old home. He was very grateful. Being on clean soil feels so much better. Now, you said that you would help me master my poison abilities? That's right. In our fight from earlier, I noticed that you weren't using your abilities fully. I think I know how I can help with that. The plant pointed me to an open part of the base and told me that he wanted me to complete two tasks. I was assigned to build some targets around, and I did as Toxin said. He wanted me to hit the targets with my poison abilities. Alright, sounds easy enough. I focused and let out my poison splash. I was able to affect all the targets right in front of me. Good! Now you should be able to use your splash on a wider area. The second task looked a lot harder. How am I supposed to do this? I want you to precisely hit the targets with your poison shot. I tried hitting the targets, but I missed them. Look, I don't think I could do this, all right? Poison isn't necessarily accurate. Nonsense. You have to focus, not with your brain, but with your heart. My heart? Okay, here goes nothing. Someday, you're gonna lead all the snakes into prosperity. I can't let her down. I can't! I then used my poison shot and hit each of the targets. Great job, Fozo. Now your abilities will be much more effective. Here's a reward for your training. Toxin infused my iron sword with poison, giving me more ways to fight and combat. Thanks! Fozo, I have found where your next upgrade lies, but you're not going to like it. I followed Zeke into a deep cave that led underground. He then led me to a spot that had a vein of diamond ores. You're going to need to prepare yourself for the road ahead. It won't be easy. I used my iron pickaxe to collect as many as I could and was able to craft myself a diamond chest plate. Nice! I continued following Zeke until we eventually reached a foggy forest. It was covered in spider webs. What is this place? This is the land of the spiders. Usually, they're not so hostile. But now, times have changed. They live here? But it seems so empty. That's because the birds wiped out the weak ones. All that's left are the elite poison spiders, and they prefer to remain secret to the world. The last person to see one was Rowan, the chef fox. Wait, you mean that fox that was beating me with a spatula? Yes, he takes animals to his home and turns them into meals. He isn't someone you can take lightly. Well, I'm ready to take him on. The road from now on will be too dangerous for me to join. You're on your own for now, but I know that you can do this. Good luck, Fozo. I believe in you. Thank you, Zeke. I won't let you down. He pointed me towards Rowan's location, and I made my way over there. On days 27 to 29, I reached Rowan's place and found myself in front of a giant kitchen. As soon as I went inside, I heard Rowan speak. Orion and I had a deal. Huh? I sneaked over to see what was going on. It looks like he's talking to one of Orion's bird minions. Orion's not pleased with you, Rowan. Pleased? I'm the one who's not pleased. I bring you the poisonous animals. You take the poison. You get your anti-venom, and I get to be full and happy. <laughs> anti-venom? That doesn't sound like a good thing. You need to step up your game, Fox, and bring more poisonous animals. Unless you want to deal with Orion himself. 
I need to find out where the poison spiders are before their conversation ends. I scan the kitchen for any clues until I found a room full of books. Each book looked like it had the coordinates to a poisonous animal. So that's how Rowan found me. I spotted the book for the poison spiders and quickly picked it up. Sweet. Now to get out of- Hey, what are you doing in my kitchen? Um, shopping? Rowan came charging at me and I immediately shot him with my poison blast, blinding him. Ah, uh, my eyes. By the way, that was personal. While Rowan was distracted, I quickly made my way out of his kitchen. The coordinates led me to a mountain deep within the jungle. I noticed a cave nearby and decided to go look for materials. Zeke said that spiders were very hostile, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. I journeyed inside and was eventually able to find some more diamonds. I mined them and was able to complete the rest of my diamond armor set. I then returned to the mountain and it was pretty tall, but lucky for me, snakes are great climbers. I scaled up the mountain and finally reached the top, but I couldn't see the poison spiders anywhere. Where could they be? The tracking says that they should be right in front of me. Unless... Oh, no. The ground below me broke, and I fell. Ah! ah not again. Ugh. I found myself trapped in a giant spider web, but... There was something strange about this one. My vision started to get blurry, and I realized it was poisonous? Oh no, I'm gonna pass out. On days 33 to 35, I was starting to recover from the poison, and my vision started to come back. I looked around and found myself surrounded by a group of poison spiders. Uh, stay back! I cut myself from the webs and saw an opening to escape through. Once I went through the opening, I was scared to see that I was in the middle of a poison spider society. Um, I'm in big trouble. They were everywhere, and I had nowhere to go. If you want to make it out of this place alive, then you must first meet our queen. The spider led me through the colony. The spider led me through the colony until we reached a throne room where a large tarantula was waiting. Who dares to intrude on Stella's secret poison society? Um, I don't mean to intrude, your majesty. I just wanted to receive the third poison upgrade. Ha! <laughs> you wish to obtain the poison upgrade. You must best me in battle. Try your best to make it out alive. Stella charged in and tried to bite, but I quickly evaded her attack. I tried hitting her with my poison blast, but she was too fast for me. She then shot me with a poison web, and I was starting to grow weak. Every time a web hit me, it made me feel tired. I can't lose here. I waited for Stella to attack, and once she did, I was able to stun her with my tail slam. Then, I shot her a bunch using my poison shot, deeming me me victorious. Congratulations. You've won this fight, and for that, I shall reward you. Stella walked up and bit me. Ow! What was that for? I, I thought you said I won. Suddenly, I felt stronger than ever and gained five more hearts. My venom is the third poison upgrade. Now you use poison webs just like me. You must go find the next keeper of poison, the sea snake. Farewell and good luck. I found the exit to the poison spider's cave. All right, time to go find this sea snake. Ow! I got hit by a trank dart and started to feel dizzy. Ah, who shot me? Did you really think you could break into my home and not suffer any consequences? Oh, no. Ow. My head. I woke up and found myself inside of a bird cage. I was next to other ones, and they were all full of other snakes. Man, I need to stop passing out. Where am I? I turned around to see a bunch of birds staring down at us. A bird was outside of my cage, watching me. Orion will be here soon, poisonous snake. He then flew, and I knew that I needed to get out of here. I need to free the other snakes too, but how? I looked up at the cages and thought about my new upgrade I got from Stella. I concentrated and used my poison web to hit the bars that were holding us captive. Eventually, the poison was strong us to break the bars and release us from our cages. Nice! We're free now! Wait, what's that? Off in the distance, I saw another bird cage, and it was holding my sister. Tara! I ran towards her, but was blocked off by Orion. Poison snake, you're here! Good! I wanted to test out my theory! The owl shot at me with some kind of blast, 
chest, and I was in a lot of pain. Ah, what's this? Something that will get rid of all poisonous creatures for good, but it's not yet complete. I already lost half of my heart. He tried to lunge at me, but I dodged him. Stay strong, Terra. I promise I'm gonna get you out soon. Run, brother. I believe in you. I didn't want to leave, but I had no other choice. I made a break for the exit and left the area. On days 39 to 41, I returned with the other snakes that escaped back to my base. Fozo, I'm glad to see that you returned safely and you brought back some friends. Yeah, show them around and make them feel comfortable. I need to regain my strength. I slowly went over to the chickens and ate some of their eggs. Are you okay? You look wounded and seem upset. Of course I'm upset. My sister, she was right in front of me and I couldn't do anything to save her. Fozo, look around you and see our base. I turned and looked around all throughout the cave. Because of you, so many lives were saved and soon enough your sister will be saved by you too. I made you a promise. We will save your family. <sighs> Thanks, Zeke. I guess I needed to hear that. I quickly gathered materials and built up some small homes for the snakes. Now, hopefully, you guys can all feel comfortable here. Thank you for rescuing us. I didn't realize why Orion was doing this until I found out from the birds. You see, long ago, Orion had a loving family. That all changed when they traveled through the wrong area. His wife and kid were attacked by poisonous animals, leaving him the only one alive. I think this is why he wants us all wiped from existence. That is tragic. But still, it doesn't make what he's doing right. All of us are innocent, and we will stop him. I came out of my house, and Zeke was outside waiting for me. There's something I want to show you. He led me to a shoreline, and we were looking over the ocean. What are we doing out here? There. The third upgrade is located deep in the waters below. It's down there? What do you mean? There's no way I'll be able to swim down there and hold my breath. I'll drown. Ah! What is that? I ran over and saw that Phil was being attacked by the same crocodile from before. Back off, you stupid croc, before I peck your eyes out. Just hold still and let me eat you. All right, enough. I used my poison web to split them up. Dude, why do you keep trying to eat my friend here? Because he's a platypus. I'm a crocodile. I just want to naturally eat him. I'll give you something to eat, you lousy- All right, enough, Phil. If I find you a new food source, will you stop trying to eat him? Sure, that works for me. The crocodile left and returned to the waters. That guy's crazy. On days 45 to 47, I began my search to find the crocodile a new source of food. I came across a large lake and looked down, only to notice that it was full of all kinds of fish. You know, this should do nicely. I found some trees nearby and chopped them all down with my iron axe. Then, I used all the wood to make a nice fishing post over the lake. I think the crocodile will like this. I brought Phil and the crocodile over to the outpost, and he looked down at all of the fish below. It's not platypus, but this will do. Hey, watch it, buddy. Pretty soon, us platypuses are gonna be at the top of the food chain, and you guys are gonna be the prey. All right, Phil, that's enough. Just be glad that the crocodile isn't going to try to eat you. You really went through all of this just to help me, even though I'm not a poisonous animal. Thanks a lot. Here, I think this should be very useful to you. He then dropped me a few scoots. Thanks. I heard that you were trying to find a way to breathe underwater longer. I hope this helps. This is going to help out a lot. I used them to craft myself a turtle helmet. I then jumped into the lake and I was able to breathe underwater. Yes. Now I can go find that next poison upgrade. I returned to the shoreline and equipped the turtle helmet. All right, here goes nothing. I jumped into the water and began swimming down to the bottom of the ocean. Eventually, I found a temple and a large sea snake guarding the entrance. Another snake? So... You think you're better than old Locke, huh? You think you can just swim around and do as you please in my waters, huh? Um, no. I just came here to get the poison upgrade. Poison upgrade? So, you do think you're better than me. Well, if you want the poison upgrade, you'll have to earn it. Listen, I don't. Locke swam past me so fast that I didn't even realize he attacked. Ow! He then did it again. Ah! And again! This guy is serious. How am I supposed to beat him in his own terrain? I tried hitting him with my poison blast, but he easily dodged it. Maybe I can draw him away from the water. Only one way to find out. I swam up closer to the surface, and he was following right behind me. I then reached above the waterline, and out of nowhere, 
midair. He launched himself over me. All right, please work while he was in midair. I continuously shot him with my poison blast, weakening him. I then hit lock with the tail slam, and the sea snake finally admitted defeat. You're a lot tougher than I thought. All right, you win. The poison upgrade is all yours. Lock bit me, and I began to transform again. My tail grew longer, and I gained five hearts. I also got a new poison wave ability. The last upgrade is going to be the hardest one yet. You'll find it in one of the most dangerous places for a snake, the Arctic. Thanks for the information, Locke. I'll head there. But first, I need to go rescue my sister. On days 51 to 53, I was making my way back to base when I spotted Zeke nearby. He was standing over two graves by a pond. Zeke, what are you doing out of the base? Bozo, say hello to my family. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. You did nothing wrong and are always welcomed around. After they passed, I made these so I can always remember them. For years, I always felt so alone being by myself, but now I know I have a new family member looking after me. You. I feel the same way, Zeke. You know, I know I've spent a lot of time trying to save my sister, but while doing so, I've never expected to find a new brother. I saw some flowers nearby and picked them up to plant them in front of the tombstones. Thanks, Pozo. You're going to save your sister. I know you can do it. Yeah, I think I'm ready to go save her now. Not only will I bring Terra back, but you will also have a new sister. I'd want nothing more. We returned to base, and I decided to build up more of the area. I upgraded my house and made it bigger to fit my new size. I then upgraded Zeke's house and added a small pond for him. After that, I decided to make the farm a bit bigger by adding plant harvests to give everyone a variety of food sources. I looked around at the base, and I was happy to see that everyone in the community was striving. Hey, Fozo! Over here! I walked over to the plant, and surprisingly, he's grown from the last time I saw him. I've gotten more powerful now, thanks to all the poison running through this cave. It's starting to feel like my home again. That's good to hear, Toxin. I'm glad you're enjoying our home. On days 57 to 59, I left the base to finally save my sister. As I was leaving, I heard rustling from some nearby bushes. What can that be? Take this! Ah! Rowan came out of the bushes and tried to attack me. I narrowly dodged it and faced the fox. You know, I am over this. Why deliver you to Orion? I will just take you down myself. He charged at me again, and we both started a fight. I can tell my poison was slowing him down a ton, but he just kept on going. Stop this! Never! This fox didn't realize how much I've upgraded, and he was about to find out. I used my new poison wave on him, and greatly injured him. I was about to finish him off, but I stopped myself. Why? Why didn't you just kill me? Lucky for you, Rowan. You're more useful to me alive than dead right now. I think I know just how you can help me save my sister. On days 60 to 62, I had a plan. Hopefully, a smart one. Don't try anything funny. Yeah, yeah, I know. Rowan quickly made his way over to Orion's main entryway, where there were two birds there keeping guard. Halt! Wait. Rowan, why are you here with no new poisonous animals? Orion, uh, told me to tell you guys to leave guard for the holidays? Weird, but, but okay. Uh, let's go, Jeffrey. I watched as both of them left. See, it wasn't so hard, was it? We both snuck in together, and that's when I saw her again. My sister. She looked so weak. I need to get her out of here and use my new poison blast to burst open a hole. Sis, it's so good to see you. Ozo? Come back for me. Tara, you're weak. I am dying and fast. Don't worry, I'll find a way to save you. Let's go now. All of a sudden, though, we heard a whistle. I turned around to see Rowan standing at the entryway with two other birds right next to him. You think I would just let you take advantage of me? Seize him! The birds charged in, but thanks to my new poison blast ability, I was able to take one down almost instantly. Whoa, I was about to hit the other one when Tara stepped in and used her own poison shot to finish the job. I may be weak. Don't forget who the leader of the snakes was. Yeah, yeah, you got a good point. Come on, we need to hurry. We were able to make it back home on days 63 to 65. The longer I was with my sister, the weaker she was looking. My goodness, your sister looks hurt. She needs poison. Poison? So what, am I supposed to attack her or something? You must find the sacred poison berry located deep within my home forest. It's what helped us plants grow. Poison berry, huh? Tara, just stay strong for me, will you? I'm... Hi, brother. 
Fozo, you must hurry! Toxin, tell me exactly where to find the berry. On day 66 to 68, I entered Toxin's home forest, but it seemed way different than before. It was a lot more quiet than the last time I was here, and I couldn't see 10 feet in front of me. I heard wings flap. Um, hello? I kept going until I reached a clearing, which revealed a hilltop. On top of it lied the poison berries. This is just too easy. I went over to grab them when I heard the tree next to me move. Um, is anyone there? In a nearby cave, two bright eyes started to glow in the shadows and the beast slowly made its way in my vision what are you you dare try to take my forest's poison berries i need them my sister she's dying i have to take them no you won't but you will die for trying! Wait, no! But it didn't listen and began to fly over my head. I tried shooting my poison at it, but it kept on dodging. Then it shot back at me its explosive spit? Ugh, this is so gross! How am I supposed to take on this thing? I got it. I perfectly timed my poison web and shot at a tree nearby, which made it unable to fly. Ugh, go ahead then, steal my berries, just like those cursed birds have stolen everything from me! Look, I'm trying to stop them. But in order to do so, I need these berries. I promise your home will return to how it once was. Once Orion and his fleet are gone, okay? The bat looked scared, but agreed to let me take them. I then went over and grabbed them. Thank you. I promise I won't let you down. On day 69 to 71, I reached back home and noticed there was a new building in the cave. I walked inside and saw Zeke standing next to my sister. Hozo, there you are. You must hurry. She doesn't have much longer. I walked over and fed my sister the poison berries. She then was able to stand properly. Ozo, thank you. I feel so much better. Of course. I'm just glad that I could help. You have saved me, but this is far from over. If we don't stop Orion, all poisonous species will come to an end. I know. Now that I know you're safe, I will go and defeat him myself. I started to leave the base and was out of the cave when I got shot from behind. Ow! You are still not ready yet. Orion has developed his anti-venom. Your attacks won't do anything to him. You must grow stronger. Well, how am I supposed to do that? Of course. The Phoenix. The Poison Phoenix shall grant you the poison powers you seek. Then I'll go out and find this phoenix. On day 72 to 74, Zeke and I went out venturing far off in the desert. Where does a poison phoenix even live? We kept walking when all of a sudden, a spatula explosion cut our path. We turned around to see Rowan on a nearby hill. I tried to give you a chance, but now you're done. Bring it! Rowan and I fought valiantly, each delivering blow after blow. His spatulas were still really tough, but I knew with my upgrades, I stood a way better chance chance. I also looked over at Zeke, and he was trying to fight as well. You, a useless frog? How dare you fight me? You will never amount to anything in life. You will never... You will never finish that sentence. Hey, thanks for keeping him busy, buddy. I looked down and saw that he dropped a map. Huh? As I picked it up, I noticed that Zeke seemed down. Are you all right? Yeah, I just... His words got to me a little. Hey, look at everything you've done. You have already amounted to one of the best animals who's fighting this cause. I know, I just wish I could do more. It's okay, Zeke. Look here. Looks like Rowan was also keeping tabs on the Poison Phoenix. I now know where... Where he resides, but it looks like it won't be easy. After reading more about the phoenix, we realized it lived in the coldest winter biome known to Minecraft. I'm not sure if you know this, but snakes aren't necessarily the cold type. So Zeke and I decided to find a way for me to survive in the cold. I know someone that may grant you your warmth follow me. I was starting to get really cold and knew that I needed to get warm fast. We then reached a hill and on the other side of it lied a small snow camp. Oh, Zeke, what brings you here? Hello, old friend. I have a bit of a problem. Zeke quickly caught his friend up about our entire situation. He told us he would love to help, but we would need to help him first. By the way, the name's Worm. Worm brought us over to his food supply, which looked pretty empty. A nasty beast keeps taking out our food while we sleep. Retreat 
retrieve our stolen items, and I shall help you. Ah, uh, seems fair. Where to? On day 78 to 80, Zeke and I reached the area Worm pointed us towards. It was getting pretty late, but I was just happy I was out of the cold. Bozo, I hear something up ahead. We kept walking forward until we made it to an opening. There, I saw plenty of food being held in barrels. I quickly went over to grab all the food. Why does this almost feel too easy? So, you think you can steal my food from me, do you? You stole them from the worms. What, you can't handle a taste of your own medicine? I shall kill you both where you still are. What the? Oh, no. Orion? He looked completely different. It looks like his anti-venom kicked in. I finally found you. Breaking in my nest? Doing as you please? Take a look, poison snake. I am almost fully anti-venomous. Your poison can't harm me. Zeke, run! Orion charged in and tried to hit me, and it did a lot of damage. I didn't think I was gonna make it. Yes, you will. Zeke walked out in between me and the owl. I am finally taking a step, Bozo. I have stood aside and watched for too long. It is time I finally do something with myself for once. I love you, brother. What are you doing? Wait, no! He didn't listen, though, and sprinted towards the owl. He then leapt the highest I've ever seen him do before, jumping right into the owl's mouth. Zeke! What, what is happening? Ouch! Orion started to take heavy poison damage. He started to panic and fly away. No, Zeke! I was left there all day alone. On days 81 to 85, I returned to Worm to give him his food. Uh, where's Zeke? He, uh, he didn't make it. Worm was very saddened to hear this. He knew just like I did that Zeke was the purest of them all. Take this, Snake. Avenge our fallen hero. He handed me over a full winter set of armor. With it, I was able to withstand the cold a lot more. Thank you. I left and reached my base to deliver the bad news. Everyone there seemed sad, but knew what he did was for every single one of us. Knowing this, I went up to the lake and made him his grave right next to his fallen families. I'm sorry, Zeke. Just know you will always be my brother. I'm gonna finish all of this for you, your family, and all of us poison creatures. On days 86 to 90, I was in the snow biome and noticed that it was snowing, like a lot. And far off in the distance, I could see a temple lying on top of a mountain. I made my way over. And once I reached the main room, I noticed a large bright green bird was there waiting for me. And who might you be? I'm the poison snake, and I'm guessing you're the poison phoenix. The phoenix then jumped down and landed right in front of me. Ah, yes. I've heard many things about you, snake. And I know what you have come for, my poison. That's right, but wait a minute. Aren't you a bird? Why would you help me? Yes, I am. One of the only poisoned birds in existence, actually. I have isolated myself in this cold area to be far away from any other of my kind. Those who have lost their vision in life by killing the innocent. I wish to stop Orion just as much as you, and for that, I shall grant you your final ability. I looked over and saw a poisonous feather on a pillar overlooking us. I quickly walked over, and as soon as I picked up the feather, red poison started to affect my body, changing my eyes into bright red and applying a red pattern on my scales. I also had five more hearts. I also noticed that I had a new ability. Whoa! Use this on Orion when he is at his weakest. I thanked the phoenix and made my way back to base. On days 91 and 94, I walked into the cave only to see a few birds attacking some of the homes. I quickly rushed over and took them down with my poison blast. Thank you, brother. These birds have found our base. It is starting to get out of control. I can see that. It's time we finish this. I think I'm ready to finally take on that owl. I then walked over to Zeke's grave. It's about time then, this buddy. I promise your death won't be in vain. If you think you're doing this alone, you are crazy. Are you sure you want to? It's going to be dangerous. My sister insisted, and the two of us headed off to confront Orion. On days 95 to 99, Tara and I arrived at Orion's nest. It's time time we finish this for all snakes. I couldn't agree more. Birds saw that we were entering and all began to fly at us. Tara used her poisonous attacks to take them down one by one while I used my new poison blast explosion to take down groups of them. That is when I saw them. Orion's two bright yellow eyes watching us on top of his nest. Bozo, it's up to you now. You must 
finish this. I will, sister. Keep them busy. I quickly ran and made my way up to where Orion waited. On day 100, I reached Orion on top of his nest. It is over. Look around you. Just give up. You really think I would give up? Oh, this is just the beginning. Soon the world of poisonous species shall feel the wrath of me. I will avenge my family. Orion charged at me, but missed. He quickly turned around, though, and shot his anti-venomous blast at me. Ouch! You have no idea how many families you've separated, all because of this mission. He didn't care, though, and just kept on attacking me. Both of us were there, attacking each other back and forth, but my attacks weren't doing that much damage. I will see to the end of your species. I will see to the end of all of them. Orion then blasted me with another shot, bringing me down to one heart. He then picked me up and started flying way over his nest. Oh no. Goodbye, snake. Once you are gone, I will stop at nothing to finish the rest of your kind. Wait, no. As I was slowly falling, I knew that this was the perfect time to shoot my final ability at him. I quickly started to concentrate and shot directly at him. I hit the floor, but to my surprise, I landed in water. Oh, thank goodness. I looked up at Orion. Please hit. Please. It hit. No! The blast caused him to fall and crash down on his nest, defeating him. Brother, you did it. No, Tara, we did. On day one, I spawned in as a cursed dragon. I was somewhere inside of a large evil castle with a witch standing in front of me. At last, I have created the cursed dragon. You will help me curse the entire world. Curse the world? Yes. Creatures like you and I have been shunned by Minecraft. They must pay for this. The witch commanded me to fly off and use my powers to spread the curse. I took off and headed towards some houses. I was worried about a fight because I only had three hearts, but I knew I had to try. There was a group of players standing right in front of me. A cursed skeleton dragon? Ah! They took out their swords and started to charge me. Ah, please no! I suddenly used my dragon breath and it converted all of them into ghoulish monsters. Whoa, that's awesome. I'm far more powerful than I look. Spreading this curse is gonna be a ton of fun. On day two, I arrived at a large kingdom with my cursed mobs by my side. We entered and started to spread our curse to all the villagers. The legend of the cursed dragon is true. The witch has returned. I blasted them with my cursed breath and started infecting the other mobs with it as well. After cursing them, I suddenly gained Five more hearts. It looked like the more people I cursed, the stronger I became. I decided to venture throughout the rest of the kingdom. I was able to find some cobblestone and wood, as well as some food. I started to command my newly acquired army to follow me. While I was flying off, I spotted a small rat running from the kingdom. Huh. Anyways, I have bigger things to curse than that little guy. As my army traveled away from the kingdom, we came across a large open area. This seems perfect for my base of operations. I dropped the material to some of the cursed creatures, and they got to work constructing me a base. Another group of creatures went out and defeated some sheep for wool. They then returned to me with a bed. Once my base was finished, I commanded my army to go into the world and curse more of it for me. This is incredible. I already have a base and an army? Man, I placed my bed down and began to feel tired. Ugh. One day, son, you'll defend these lands just like I do. I just know it. Dad? Ugh. Who was that? Are there more dragons out there? Man, I have to go and see the witch about this. On day four, I returned to the witch's lair, and there were cages full of prisoners. Bozo, just in time. I need you to curse these creatures for me now. Of course. I immediately blasted all the cages with my breath and cursed them. After cursing the prisoners, the witch grew a little in size. The witch was happy with the progress that I've made and rewarded me with a set of bone tools. Tools? What am I going to need this for? The witch told me to go off and retrieve an item for her, and in return, she will share more of her power with me. Sounds like a plan. On day five, I was traveling toward the location the witch had given me. She mentioned a very specific block.
black and red urn I would have to collect. Along my travels, I spotted my cursed army attacking a castle. It made me so proud to know that my army was still hard at work. Suddenly, a rat came rushing towards me from the castle. Wait a minute, was that the same rat? These guys seem to be all over the world. Hey, stop! Uh, now why would I do that, huh? The rat told me that he just left one kingdom and now was forced out of this one by a bunch of undead ghouls. Name's Buster. Everywhere I go, people just don't want me around. What did I ever do to anybody, man? I'm just trying to live a life. I thought about using my breath to curse him, but I decided against it. He was an outcast, just like me and the witch, so I felt a connection with him. Listen, here's the coordinates to my base. You can stay there. Buster thanked me and set off toward my home. I continued on my journey and eventually eventually came across a large structure. This must be the place that the witch told me about. On day six, I entered the structure and there were some kind of strange looking villagers inside. They had guns and began to attack me. I blasted the creatures with my cursed breath, but it had no effect on them. Huh? Was this what the witch was talking about? I took out the bone sword the witch had given me and began to fight back against them. We defeated the curse once. We will do it again. Ah, stop it. If I can't change you, then you must be destroyed. I started dodging the creature's attacks and managed to defeat all of them. I then started to feel strange and suddenly I grew into a full-size dragon and I noticed that I had 20 hearts. But then I began to feel sick and ugh. Hide now! Dad, what's going on? You will never get away with this. Dad! Ugh. What are these memories I'm having? I don't have time for this right now. I need to get that item. I found the urn and picked it up. Awesome. I hope the witch is pleased with my accomplishment. I flew away from this place. I wonder who those people were and what they wanted. Man, that's for another day though. On day seven, I returned back to my base and saw Buster was fighting with one of the cursed mobs that was there. Hey buddy, I didn't take anything away from you, all right? Get away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Break it up, guys. I separated the two of them, and the cursed creature walked away. I decided since he was there, I needed to make a place for him to stay. We got to work constructing a house for him. Once we finished, I realized because of my size, I wasn't going to be able to fit in my own house now. The two of us continued to build my base to fit my new size. Afterwards, I knew Buster was going to need to eat something. I got to work collecting seeds and created a small farm for him. Buster then said, Here, Fozo. I lied. I took this from him. He dropped me a cursed helmet. Hey, thanks. This is going to come in handy, but maybe don't lie, all right? I realized that this guy wasn't that bad after all. I told him that I had to go see the witch and deliver her an item that I went out to get her. Ah, uh, witch, you say? How do you know that you can trust her? Witches are people that you can't really trust that often. No, I told him that we worked together and she brought me into this world. I had no reason to think otherwise. Buster just nodded his head, but I decided to ignore it. I headed off toward the witch. On day eight, I made it to one of the witch's new hideouts and she was waiting for me. Whoa, she's definitely definitely getting larger. She told me that now a fourth of the world has been cursed. We're that much closer to cursing the entire world. It seems you've gotten bigger as well. Do you have the item I requested? Yes, I, I do. I gave her the urn, and in return, she cast a spell and gave me a new ability. I wonder why she wanted that urn and why it appeared as though those people were guarding it. I didn't have time to ask questions because the witch told me to test out my new ability. I jumped in the air, and when I landed, I sent out a cursed shot wave in all directions. Wow, this is so strong. Yes, and soon you'll be the most powerful mob in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I then asked the witch about the memories I thought I was acquiring. She told me that I need to do one more thing for her, but it's going to be much more difficult. I will tell you what you want to hear once you do this for me. On days 9 to 10, I made my way into the jungle like the witch had instructed me to do. What was I looking for? I came to a clearing when I heard a loud roar behind me. I turned to see a large jungle beast emerge. The cat started to charge at me, and I stood my ground using my breath to curse it. It didn't seem to work, and the beast hit me really hard, taking away some of my heart. I started to fight at him close range to weaken him while trying to avoid his attacks. I jumped in the air and used my new shockwave ability to weaken him. I used my breath on the beast again, and yes, the beast transformed into a large black cursed beast. I told the beast to link up with the rest of my army. As he headed off, I realized that although I felt like the strongest monster, I was far from it. I was going to need to get some serious upgrades if I wanted to lead this army correctly and fast.
On days 11 to 12, I went inside of a cave and started to look for iron to finish my armor set. I continued deeper inside and eventually found some iron. Once I collected it all, I smelted it and used it to create an iron set of pants and boots. This should be much stronger now. I made my way out of the cave and suddenly got ambushed by the strange villager hunters I'd seen earlier. Kill the dragon for the resistance. Do you really think you guys stand a chance against me now? I started to fight them with my tools until I realized, oh no. Oh, there's too many of them. I blasted the hunters with my cursed breath and was actually able to convert most of them to my army. One of the hunters managed to avoid the attacks and said, Stupid dragon, do you really think that bad breath of yours is helping the world? I don't care what you think. You have shunned people like me from this world for too long. This was the right thing, right? All these people deserve the curse for how they treated us. I need to find out who these people are and what exactly is going on. I flew toward the witch, wondering if what I did was right. I returned to the witch's hideout, still thinking about the events of the previous day. Who are those people? Bozo, so good of you to return. Did you complete the task that I had given you? Yes, I converted the beast, but there's still something far more troubling. The witch told me that she was proud, but wanted to know what bothered me. I told her about my encounter with these strange hunters and their accusations against us. I asked if cursing everyone was the right thing to do. Of course. Of course it's right. Those monsters are responsible for so many of our people, including your parents. My parents? The witch told me the resistance hunted down my parents and ended them for being so different. I was filled with so much rage. Where are they? They must be destroyed. The witch told me that their base was a castle not far from here. Now go, Fozo. Destroy the resistance and avenge your parents. I won't fail you. I flew out of the base, ready to destroy everything in my path. On days 15 to 16, I made it to the castle the witch mentioned. As I landed inside of it, the people started running around in a frenzy. The curse is back! We're all doomed! Who are these people? I needed to get some answers. Aren't you guys responsible for the death of the dragons? The citizens still ran from me, and I was frustrated. I managed to catch one of the citizens. You! You guys are the ones responsible for killing my people! No! We had nothing to do with the disappearance of dragons! He explained that dragons were sacred to their people. I wasn't sure if I believed him, but he told me that there was an ancient library that could confirm what he was saying. He also told me that there's other information about the curse. The curse? I remembered all the people I'd seen screaming about the curse returning. Yes, don't you know how much your curse is destroying the world? I flew off toward the library. One thing's for certain, I need to know the truth. I had been flying for a while when I spotted my army. I noticed that they had grown in size since the last time I saw it. Wow, you guys have been busy. Because of my cursed breath, more creatures have joined the witch's army. If I kept spreading the curse, our army would be unstoppable. One of the soldiers in the army approached me. So, where should we go next? Hmm, if I took them to the library with me, it would be a hassle. I couldn't just let them go around and attack more people until I had my answers. I flew over to the army and issued a command. Cursed army, return to the witch and await for further orders. The army obeyed me and made their way back to the witch. Good. I flew off from the army and landed in front of the library. Now I can finally get some answers. You there? What are you doing back here? And where is Fozo? The dragon has ordered us to return here while he ventured elsewhere. What are you up to, Fozo? On days 19 to 20, I made my way throughout the library looking for answers. I kept looking around and found a book. It was about the witch. I read the book and found out that the witch was so curious about magic and spells and decided to experiment on all the villagers, some of which helped, while others seemed to have drastic results. She refused to stop her work, and as her ambition grew, the villagers had no choice but to banish her from the village. Before she left, the witch vowed to curse everyone who has wronged her. The book also told me that the witch continued her experiments and made enemies with other creatures like dragons. Dragons? I tried to read more of the book, but it didn't have any more value. If she was enemies with the dragons, why would she create me? I knew something was off, but I wasn't sure who I could believe. I had to talk to Buster and see if he could help me. I flew off back towards my base. On days 21 to 23, 
I flew back and Buster was there waiting for me. He had a strange look on his face. What is it? Do you have something to tell me? Yeah, while you were gone, I know how much you like liked your armor. So I gathered this from all of those boneheads over there. Buster dropped me the rest of the cursed armor set. Thank you. I really appreciate what you've done for me. He could tell that I was down and asked me what was going on. I caught him up on the information I'd found at the library. So she was expelled from the village for her less than conventional practices. I don't know what to believe. I tried to warn you, but you didn't want to listen to me, man. He continued to say that rumors of the cursed witch had been heard all around the world before I even showed up. It seems as though the rumors are now confirmed, man. How could I have been deceived by this? I was tricked into spreading this witch's curse, and it was never about me, but rather her own selfish wants. I flew off to confront her. This ends now. On days 24 to 26, I returned to the witch's hideout. It appears as though the cursed army was not here. Where could they have gone? Witch, what in the world is this curse that you've been spreading all over the world? Isn't this curse the reason you got banished from that village? How dare you look into my past? You had no right. I, I have no right? You're the one that's been lying to me. This curse isn't helping anyone. You need to stop all of this right now. Stop. I'm just getting started. The witch blasted me and sent me flying through the air. I guess I have no choice but to take you down. I blasted her with my cursed breath, but it had no effect. The witch laughed and it hit me with a stronger spell. Ah, oh, she's so strong. You foolish dragon. No one will stop me from cursing this world. Not even you. I needed to escape. I used the rest of my strength and flew away before she could deal any more damage to me. I couldn't fly anymore and crash landed into the ground. I felt so weak. Ugh. You will never win as long as my son exists. I have a plan for that. Dad! Come, dragon. I have big plans for you. On days 27 to 29, I woke up and realized that, that witch was responsible all along for the death of my family. I noticed that in my fight, I lost some of my hearts. I only have 10 now. I doomed the world by spreading this curse and strengthening all of her powers. What had I done? There were screams in the distance and I rushed towards them. I came across a large village that was under attack from my cursed army. I commanded the army to stand down and stop attacking attacking it. They looked at me and refused to listen. I noticed they were turning all of the villagers into cursed skeletons. I landed and tried to defend the villagers using my abilities. I realized not only had the witch taken away some of my hearts, but also I didn't have any of my cursed powers now. I had to fight the army using my weapons, but they were not very effective. I flew into the air and spotted skeleton villagers. Why are you helping us? I told them I'd seen the errors in my way and wanted to help Help him out. I asked the villager to follow me back to my base and he would be safe. The villager agreed and hopped on my back as we flew off. I returned to base with the villager and noticed that something looked different. There was a group of skeleton cows here. Buster approached me and said they had wandered by while we were gone, and he built them a place to stay. I thanked them for giving the creature shelter and told them that we had more work to do. We got to work building a place for the villager to stay in. He was grateful for me sheltering him at my base. Once we finished building, I started to talk to Buster about what could be done to fight back against the curse. He told me in the past there was a resistance that formed together to defend feed it. Last time I heard, they had some kind of like headquarters, but these are just rumors, dude. I don't know if they're true. Without any other leads, this seemed like my best bet to set things straight. I headed off toward the old headquarters. Rise from the ash and be born again, Zilla. What is thy fitting? There is a dragon I want you to kill. On days 33 to 35, I was traveling toward the location of the old resistance headquarters when I came to a thick forest. I began to travel on foot to make it easier to spot anything, but all of a sudden, I started to hear rustling in the trees nearby. Time for you to be ended, dragon! I was surrounded by members of the resistance! I had seen these people before! Wait, stop! I told the resistance members that I wanted to help. I was tricked by the witch and need to make things right. The resistance members told me that they did didn't believe me, but noticed I was far weaker. They decided to take me to their leader. They led me to a massive 
base with a large interior. Standing before me was the leader of the resistance, who introduced himself as Marky. I told him I wanted to help and defeat the witch. She killed my family. Hmm. If what you're saying is true, I will give you a chance to prove yourself through actions. He told me that when they had defeated the witch in the past, she was not nearly as powerful as I made her now. There has to be something that we can do. I refuse to believe that what I'd done was irreversible. There is something you can do for us. Go and retrieve our magical scroll. Marky explained to me where I could find the temple containing one of the most powerful pieces of magic that had ever been created. I thanked him for the opportunity and headed off. On days 36 to 38, as I made my way towards the temple, I heard something calling my name. What was that? I landed and spotted a giant, monstrous-looking creature. So you're the dragon the witch has told me about. Witch? She must have summoned him here, just like me. The demon told me that he was on a mission to destroy me and continue to spread the curse. The monster immediately attacked and tried to bite me. I tried to fight back against him, but I dealt no damage. I realized my cursed tools seemed to have no effect on him. He attacked me again, and I noticed that I was taking even more damage as well. I was down to one heart and knew I wouldn't last any longer, so I had no choice but to fly off and escape. <laughs> Run away all you want. Soon, you will meet your demise. Man, I need to get some new gear if I want to survive in this cursed world. I made it away from the creature and landed near a cave. I knew I was going to need to get rid of these cursed tools if I wanted to fight back. I used the tools to gather iron and created a set of iron tools. Afterwards, I created a chest plate and tried to equip it. To my surprise, I wasn't able to put it on. What's going on? I tried to take my cursed armor off, but it seemed to be bound to me. Great. I'm stuck with this stuff now. I couldn't think about it. I had a mission to complete. I made my way to the ancient temple Marky had told me about. Once I entered, I was entrapped in a magical cage. The curse shall never be able to enter. Ouch! What was that? I realized I was starting to get hurt. What was this place? The voice spoke again. Prove your worth. I was starting to rapidly lose hearts. I didn't have much time. I spoke to the voice and I told them I now know how wrong I was to spread the witch's curse. As I finished speaking, the cage vanished and turned around to see a pedestal with a strange item on top of it. I collected it, and yes, it was exactly what I was looking for. I headed off from the temple. On days 42 to 44, I returned to base and found Buster. I showed him the scroll and told him about the powers it possessed. Wait, you can save curses now? Prove it! The rat and I went to the cow pens, and I Ooh. used it on the skeletal cows. Immediately, the cows turned back to normal. It works! It really works! We walked around the base, and we both discussed the possibility that this scroll can restore everyone that's been cursed. Why don't we try using it on one of those villages, huh? That's a great idea. We visited the cursed villager, and I tried to use the scroll on him. Sadly, it didn't cure him, and I felt bummed out about it. The rat told me not to worry, because there's still hope thanks to this cloth. I knew he was right, but I was still upset that I couldn't save everyone right now. The villager approached me and said, I really am missing my family. I felt his pain. I was missing the family the witch had taken away from me too. I told him to come with me and I would look for them with him. We flew off together. On days 45 to 47, the villager and I flew across the land and eventually came across another village. He told me that despite the curse, he hoped his family still lived here. We searched the village and were able to find them. The villager ran towards his family and I can tell that they missed each other. As I watched the family, I really started to grow sad thinking about my own. How many families had I separated by spreading this curse? I knew what I had to do. I needed to remove this curse from the world to protect families like theirs. I told the family to return to my base. It was safer there. After I watched them leave, I flew over to meet with Marky to show him I'd proven myself and obtained the scroll. I showed him the scroll, and he was impressed to see that I was able to beat the protectors. He was starting to come around. Hmm. I don't know much about dragons, but I do know someone who does. I knew we had to work faster, though, so I asked him if he knew any way I could cure myself of the curse and restore more people. Marky dropped me a map 
and told me hopefully I could find the answers I'm looking for there. I thanked him for helping me. No, thank you, Fozo. We can't do this without you. I flew off following the map. While I was, I heard screams of villagers. I noticed that there was a huge army of cursed soldiers being led by the witch. They were attacking a city. I told her she was wrong and I had to find a way to stop her now. You do know that scroll isn't going to do anything. How did she know about the scroll? She told me that she already knew about my plans and that they were futile. It's too late, Bozo. Soon this world will be completely cursed. If you think I'm gonna let you have your way, then you've got another thing. Ah! The witch immediately shot me with a spell. She was getting stronger and I had to leave now. <laughs> Get away with this! I already have. <laughs> the witch will be pleased. On days 51 and 53, I arrived at the location that the map had directed me to. It was a massive temple. What did Marky want me to find here? I headed inside, but the place looked totally abandoned. Is anyone here? Another dragon? I turned around to see a large dragon standing behind me. Who? Who are you? My name is Alden. I feared I was the last of our kind. Long ago, the witch hunted us down. Dragons hold the balance of this world, and she feared we would be able to stop her curse. I told them how she tricked me, but I was working for the resistance and wanted to help. I already had the scroll, but it wasn't effective. I needed more. Alden told me that some of the ancient dragons that lived before this time had left scales from themselves around the world. Maybe with those, you can restore your breath and reverse the curse that is on you. Reverse my own curse? I want nothing more than to bring everyone back to the way it was. I thanked him and left. I started my journey to find the first dragon scale and noticed that more of the curse was spreading throughout the land. I don't know if I'll be able to stop this before it takes over the world, but I must have hope. Everyone is counting on me. I continued flying and saw that a village was being attacked by the witch's cursed army. I wish I never created this. I flew down and protected the villagers from being cursed. It was clear my iron sword was much more effective on them than my cursed weapon was. Once I was able to defeat them, all the villagers gathered and looked at me. Oh no. Are they going to attack? The villagers approached me and thanked me for saving them. I was shocked, but appreciated them. Thank you, you once evil but now good dragon! I told them to stay safe and flew off. You know, it felt good to not be seen as a monster. I finally arrived at the desert temple and began my search for the scale. On days 57 to 59, I entered the desert temple and began to look for anything that could resemble a dragon scale. There were strange spirits haunting the temple. Are these part of the witch's army? What are they doing here? The spirits rushed at me and began to attack. I tried to calm them, but they wouldn't listen. I had no choice but to fight them off. They didn't pack too much of a punch, but in numbers, they were strong. Eventually, I was able to defeat all of them and continue to search to the temple. I moved through it and came across a room with what looked like a dragon scale in the center. I quickly grabbed it and the scale combined with my scroll. It felt like a surge of power and wow, I have 15 hearts. I noticed my boots had changed as well. They were no longer cursed. I tried my dragon breath. Yes, I had a new one. This one was green and it felt more full of life. Maybe with this, I can reverse more of the curse. On day 60 to 62, I returned to the base and noticed the villager and his family were here. I tested out my new breath and was able to lift the curse from them, turning them back into regular villagers. Thank you so much! I told them that they can return to their village, but they refused. They wanted to stay with me. I decided to use some of the material I had to expand the villager's house and give his family enough space. I was still in the building mood, so I spent some time making upgrades to my house, as well as the farm. We were definitely going to need the extra food with them around. Hey, uh, Fozo, what's with all the commotion, huh? I told them that I invited the villagers to come join us here if they wanted to stay away from the curse. The rat didn't seem too happy about that. 
I asked him what was wrong. He told me that with more people coming to base, he felt like I would forget about him. I told him not to ever think like that because I would never forget him. He was my best friend in this cursed world. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Fozo. I really appreciate that. Suddenly, a member of the resistance arrived at my base. Fozo, we need your help. He then died, and I knew they were in trouble. I rushed back to the resistance headquarters. On day 63 to 65, I made it to Marky's castle, and the place was completely destroyed. I flew around, and all I can see was destruction and fire. I finally spotted Marky and flew down to him. What happened? The witch. She found our location and destroyed our entire operation. He told me that he was surprised because the witch wasn't this powerful before. This isn't good. If this keeps up, the witch will be unstoppable. You're our only hope, Fozo. We must work faster before it is too late. I told them to send any survivors to my base. If this location was compromised, they would be safer there. Marky told me where I could possibly find the next dragon scale. He knew one of the ancient dragons made her home at an ice temple. I thanked Marky and told him to be careful. I flew away from the castle and headed for the temple. I flew up the mountains and felt something familiar about this place. What was it? I landed and found a dragon's nest, but it was destroyed. I walked around the nest and I instinctively knew what this place was. Was this my... Your home. I turned around and the witch was right behind me. She told me that she knew that I'd find my way here eventually. What are you doing here? Come to destroy more families? Well, not today because I'm stopping you. Oh, Fozo. Nothing will have any effect on what has been done. Not even dragon magic. No, I don't believe you. <laughs> no matter what you do, the curse will not be undone. You have already lost and you don't even know. I immediately attacked the witch with my new dragon breath, but she dodged my attack. I won't let you destroy anyone else's home like mine. You took everything from me. The witch laughed and began to fight back against me. I can tell her power had increased since we fought last. I knew if I continued fighting, all of what we were working for could be lost. I realized that the best thing I could do was flee. I flew out and made my way towards the temple. Next time, you won't be so lucky, witch. On day six, 69 to 71, I arrived at the ice temple Marky had told me about. I made my way inside and began to look for the dragon scale. It didn't take long before I'd found it. Yes! I rushed up to collect it, and it combined with the other and the scroll. I felt a surge of power, and my cursed chest plate was replaced with a new one. I also noticed that I had 20 hearts. This seemed too easy, like something else had to be waiting for me. Bozo, I should have expected you were here. He rushed at me, and we started a fight. I threw everything I had at him using my breath of life. Oh, so strong. I was close to taking him down for good, but then left the temple. What was that? Where is he going with it? I tried to rush after him, but he was gone. I thought I finally had him. Ugh, no matter. I headed off to test my new upgrades. Now that I had two of the scales, I wanted to test my breath on some of the cursed mobs. I noticed a village that was completely cursed. The village was full of skeleton villagers. I used my breath on them, but nothing happened. Come on, this has to work. I have to save everyone this time. I gathered up all the strength and used my breath on the entire village. The villagers and the village started to turn back to normal. The curse was gone. The villagers surrounded me and thanked me. Thank you, scary dragon. You're not a bad guy. Guys, he's not a bad guy. It felt great to be appreciated for my good deeds. I needed to tell Buster the good news. So I flew back towards my base. Go destroy Bozo! Yes, as you wish. On day 75 to 77, I returned to my base and noticed that the resistance had arrived. Buster told me while I was gone, they showed up. They immediately started to construct houses for themselves, as well as help the villagers with their homes. You know, you're kind of a hero, Fozo. Word of you has started to spread around the world, and everyone is motivated everywhere. I asked him what he meant, and he told me that more and more villagers were starting to believe the curse could be lifted. That's excellent news, but... Uh, 
how do you feel? I don't know. To be honest with you, I'm still mad at them for how they treated me. Always making me feel like an outcast and all. Hey, look around at everyone here. Things are gonna change. How much a few simple acts of hospitality brought joy to all these people? We just gotta keep it up. Yeah, yeah, you might be right, Fozo, but... He was interrupted by Marky, running over to us. The witch's creation is terrorizing a nearby city. You have to save those people. I told Buster our conversation could wait and rushed off to save them. On day 78 to 80, I confronted the T-Rex demon in the city. Your reign of terror ends now, Zilla. <laughs> You fool! I'm nothing more than a pawn in all of this. The monster told me that soon, the witch will reach her final form, and there's nothing I could do to stop her. Yeah, we'll see about that. Our fight began, and Zilla charged at me to go in for a fight. I immediately dodged his attack and knocked him back. I was much stronger than I was before, so I knew that I could beat him, but it just won't be that easy. Zilla tried to curse me, and I lost five of my hearts. I blew my purifying breath and greatly injured him. You you will never win, Fozo. You've already lost. I shot my breath on him again and finally defeated the T-Rex demon. Good. Now I needed to go and find the witch. <laughs> now this world will finally be cursed. On days 81 to 85, I arrived at the witch's lair and began to search around for her. Where could she possibly be? As I looked around the base, I started to search through her chest, and to my surprise, she had a dragon scale? As I grabbed the scale, it combined with the others, and suddenly, I gained another five hearts, and my pants converted too. How did she get this? It was your father's. I took it from him when I defeated him. You're a monster. I will never let you get away with any of this. And now that I have all my scales, I'm going to stop you. You're too late. I have everything I need to reach my final form. Nothing you do now even matters. She began to fight against me. I had everything I needed and knew there was no way I would stand a chance against her now. I rushed away from her and headed somewhere that I hoped she wouldn't. I flew away from the witch and landed on the mountains where I used to live. Oh, I started to wonder. I had all the scales. Why am I not a regular dragon again? I tried to use my breath on myself, but it had no effect. How come I just can't break my own curse? Had all of this just been a waste of time? Instead of defeating the witch, I let her become so powerful to the point where now I can't stop her. I heard a strange noise and saw a flash of light. Suddenly, my father was standing before me. Your heart, son. That is what makes a dragon what we are. My father told me that the witch had taken my heart to create the curse that was on me, and if I wanted to return, I'll need a new heart. But if death how will I be able to bring you back as well, though? I need your help to defeat her. There is no way to bring us back, son. We are already gone, but you can still save the world. My father told me to head back to my base. Someone was waiting for me. Before I could say any more, he vanished. Wait, no, Dad! Oh, man. I hoped that he knew what he was talking about. I headed off towards my base. On days 91 and 94, I returned and saw everyone gathered around. I looked and saw Alden had arrived at my base. Alden, I thought you were too weak to travel. I could sense the world needed me to do so. He continued to say that although I cannot bring my family back, I can use his heart. With my heart? You will be able to save the world. You just need to believe in yourself. The old dragon said he had lived in fear for too long and wanted to make things right. Alden passed away and dropped his heart in front of me. No, I was stunned, but I knew he believed it was right. I collected the heart and I felt so strong and powerful. In a flash of light, my curse was lifted and I returned to a normal dragon. I noticed that I had 30 hearts and all my cursed armor had been converted. I was cured. Marky and Buster approached me, and we began to formulate a plan to fight back against the witch. If I was able to restore more of the world, it might weaken her enough and give me a fighting chance to defeat her. Good luck, Fozo. Be careful, buddy. Come back alive, all right? I will, Buster. I will. On days 95 to 99, I left the base and began to travel from village to village, lifting the curse from each area. I made sure I went far and wide to reach as many villages as I could. As I left, villagers cheered for me calling me their savior. It felt great to lift the curse and restore things the way they should be. But all of a sudden, as I was looking for more villages, I spotted the witch's army moving, and it was far larger than I'd ever remembered. I began to fly over the army and fight back against them. As I used my breath, I noticed that many of them were changing back. The cured people began to 
fight back with me. And I told them to let me restore everyone. With one large breath, I was able to convert everyone back to normal. One of the resistance members approached me and told me that I needed to end the witch now before she was able to create another cursed army. You're right. I'm running out of time before the witch uses her abilities to curse everyone. I need to stop her now. It was day 100 as I arrived at the witch's base. I spotted her and noticed that she seemed weaker than when I last saw her. It's over. You have lost. I have already defeated your army and I'm going to defeat you too if I have to. I will never surrender, Fozo. I created you and I will take you out now if I must. This world will be my cursed dream. Never! She shot a large spell at me and I nearly dodged it before rushing at her with my own attacks. As I hit her with my dragon breath, I noticed that she was growing smaller and smaller. This must be the secret to defeating her. This cannot be. You cannot win. I'm fighting for more than just my own selfish purposes, witch. But you wouldn't know what that's like. I kept attacking her and can tell that she was growing more and more frustrated. Bozo, now is your chance. She's weaker than she has been. I could hear my dad's voice guiding me through the battle and saw her growing smaller once again. I told her to give up because it was no use anymore. I will curse you! So I used my dragon breath one more time on her and took her down for good. The curse had been lifted across the world and now it was time for a new beginning.